Welcome to our Bible study topics for D-Groups. Tonight's topic is all things new, understanding who you are in Christ. When we become a Christian, it's important to understand that everything is new. As the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and see the new has come. When I became a Christian, I can remember how aware I became very quickly of how everything was new, everything was different. Christ had come into my life and I could truly realize that something had happened. I had been born again. Now the Holy Spirit was living inside of me and I had a new awareness. I had a new reality and I began to understand that I was a different person and that the Bible helped me understand what had happened in my life and that's what I want to show you tonight 
is how the Bible will describe what happens when you become a Christian, understanding the new you, how you are now in Christ. You're a new creature. You're a new person. Theologians like to say that salvation has three aspects. First is salvation from the penalty of sin. This is what happens when we come to Christ and we're saved. Uh, he is no longer counting our sins against us because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are saved from the penalty of our sins. That's the doctrine of justification. And then we spend the rest of our Christian lives on earth uh, experiencing salvation from the power of sin. This is the doctrine of sanctification, living a holy life. And that's what we're going to focus on tonight in this brief lesson. And then the third part is salvation from the presence of sin. One of these days when Christ comes and we see him face to face, we'll experience the fullness of our salvation by being saved from the very presence of sin and that's the doctrine of glorification. So let's jump into this. We're going to look briefly at five benefits of our salvation that we need to be aware of to understand and appreciate who we are in Jesus Christ. The first benefit is the new life that we experience and the new standing with God that we now have and enjoy. And then the new identity, and a new nature, and a new power, so that we can live differently. We can follow Christ and walk in the light. Let's look at the first benefit tonight, new life in Christ. The Bible says that God, who is rich in mercy because of His great love that He had for us, made us alive with Christ even though we were dead in trespasses, you are saved by grace. Notice the difference that happens when Christ comes into our life. We move from being dead in our trespasses and sins to being made alive with Christ. Truly, we experience new life in Christ. We are born again, as Jesus told Nicodemus. The second thing, because we now have new life, we now have a new standing with God. Romans 5.17 says, If by the one man's trespass death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive the overflow of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Now, when you read this, this verse in its context, when you read the second half of Romans chapter 5, Paul is talking about two men. He's talking about Adam and Jesus Christ. Adam is the one man's trespass, that, is, that, that as a result of Adam's sin, death entered the world and reigned through, through that one man. But, thanks be to God, Jesus has come, and through him a gift of righteousness is available. And so, when you come to know Jesus Christ, your life changes from being in Adam, which is a death sentence, to being in Christ and receiving His gift of righteousness and eternal life. And that, my friends, is a new standing with God. We, we as believers in Jesus are no longer in Adam. We are in Christ because Christ is in us. And that leads to our new identity. We're now a different person. Romans 8 clearly says that the Spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit, Himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children, and if children, also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him so that we may also be glorified with Him. Notice we have a new identity. We are now God's children. We are heirs of God. We are co-heirs with Christ. And how do we know we're God's children? It's simple. He says that the Holy Spirit testifies with our spirit that we're children of God. When you come to Christ and receive Christ in your life, you now are in Christ because Christ is in you. And the Holy Spirit will give you that, uh, that witness in your heart that He lives in you. And that's how you know you're saved. You have that testimony from the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. And you now have a new identity. You are a child of God and an heir of God and a co-heir with Christ. 
Not only do we have a new identity, we have a new nature. Galatians 2.20, Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Notice you have a new nature. You have been crucified with Christ. You no longer live, but Christ lives in you. Now Christ lives in you. And you, you now have the ability to live this new life because you have His nature inside of you. And that's very, very powerful. Many times you'll hear people say, well, I, I, don't think I'm, I don't think I can become a Christian because I just don't think that I can live up to it. I don't think I can, um, I don't think I can handle that responsibility. I don't think I could ever you know, live out that way of life consistently. I've heard people say that before. But here's the truth. When you come to Christ... You receive Him in your life, and now Christ lives in you. And because He lives in you, you can live this life that He's calling you to live. So I encourage you to realize that as a Christian, you have a new nature, and you, do, and you can depend on the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit inside. You know, because you have a new nature, you now have a new struggle. We have this choice that we have to make each and every single day. Paul said it well in Galatians. He said, I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the Spirit, and the Spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other so that you don't do what you want. We are commanded to walk by the Spirit. If we walk by the Spirit, then we won't do what the flesh wants. But we have to choose because the flesh is against the spirit and the spirit is against the flesh and they're opposed and so you can't do what you want you're always torn am I gonna do this or I'm gonna do that but a child of God has to settle the issue I've spent enough of my life living according to the flesh now that I have the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in my life I'm going to walk by the power of the Holy Spirit and we might have that struggle, but we have the key to the victory, and that is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And that comes to the last part. The last benefit is a new power. Paul told the Ephesians, I pray that God may grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with power in your inner being through His Spirit. You know, the power that's available to us is through the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. We just need to lean in and depend on Him each and every day. That's why we need to pray regularly. That's why we need to get in God's Word daily. Is because we are connecting to that power source so that we can uh, seek God and receive strength from God in order to live out this life that He is calling us to live. So to summarize tonight, in Christ we have new life, we have a new standing with God, we have a new identity, we have a new nature, and we have a new power, and that is the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I want to end it like this. I'm reminded of Peter when he followed Jesus. In Luke chapter 5, it says, As the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear God's word, he was standing by Lake Gennesaret, and he saw two boats at the edge of the lake. The fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, which belonged to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the land. Then he sat down and was teaching the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Master, Simon replied, we've worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets. When they did this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets began to tear. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, because I'm a sinful man, Lord. For he and all those with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, Zebedee's sons, who were Simon's partners. Don't be afraid, Jesus told Simon. From now on, you'll be catching people. And then they brought the boats to land, left everything, and followed him. 
I love this story because Simon Peter has an encounter with Jesus. And Simon knew one thing. He knew how to fish. But, as the story indicates, they had been fishing all night long and he caught nothing. But because Jesus said so, they let down the nets. And as a result, there was such a great number of fish, their nets began to tear. And so they signaled their partners in the other boat, and both boats were full. And when this experience was over, Simon Peter fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away, Lord. I'm a sinful man. In other words, I don't deserve this. And then Jesus said, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching people. And at that moment, they left everything and followed Jesus. I want you to consider this story tonight. Have you had a moment of decision when you began to trust and follow Jesus?